Hello guys and welcome back to Comment and it's time for another tutorial and today we are going to change a little bit about the image effects and especially the depth of field. So we've got an effect like in Grand Theft Auto or whatever. Before we're going to start a little bit about scene, it's not very interesting but people can follow it. Um, the world, there's just an object where there's just a few basic objects, this just makes sure that we can just uh, watch something and just see if the script in the end will work. A floor prototype so we can walk around. Uh, and the FPS control is just a standard FPS control. I didn't change anything about it except the things we're going to do right now in this tutorial. So you will come towards the image effects, towards the camera, depth of field. We are going to um, change the transform on this, but if you don't have the script already, go towards Assets, Import Package, Effects. So this is a Unity standard assets. If you cannot find this, it's probably also on the Asset Store. But we are not going to change anything in the script itself, but we're going to assign a variable, the Focus on Transform variable, and we're going to focus it on an empty. So create an empty, name it Depth of Field Object, and assign it to the first person character. We are not going to change a lot about those other variables. In the end, just play around with it until it just got a nice feeling. And in every game it's a little bit different. So that's why we don't really going to focus on that. About the depth of field object, um, it will look something like this. So if you move it around towards this spire, you see that this is focused. Well, if you're going to put it right on this wall here, you see the wall is focused and all the other things are blurred and so on. So what we're going to do is make sure that wherever you're pointing at or looking at, that is going to be, uh, well, sharp and all, all the other things are blurred out. Also, what we're going to do is this is, well, this kind of takes a lot of performance. And when you're on mobile, you don't have those resources. So we're first going to create this just very nice and then after that we're just going to disable it temporary and for if you have for example a mobile i would just um, say another way to do the same thing but to look less nice and also it will just take less resources so that's kind of the cheap way to do it but first we're going to create a script uh, right click create c sharp script and call it depth of field manager So open this up, and re reload everything here, and we are going to remove the start function, and we're going to add three variables, all private because other scripts don't need it, but we're going to make it a serious sizable field so we can change it within the inspector. First a private layer mask, array mask. We are going to work with ArrayCast and we need to make sure that you don't hit the player itself. If you are having a first person control it isn't really a huge big of a deal because in the end you cannot touch yourself but if you are a third person controller you want to make sure that wherever you are pointing at is going to be the object where you are looking at instead of the object uh, of the per player itself. So let's make sure that you don't hit that layer of the player. Then we also got a server size of field, a private float, max distance. Just make sure that we got the distance of where the raycast will go, because you don't want to have it, for example, when you're walking around in Skyrim, you don't want it to focus on a mountain that's two kilometers away. So we have here a max distance. Then you also need another search sizable field. Very important, a private transform depth of field object. And this is the object we are going to move around. Then we also got one last variable and that variable is a private raycast hit. Hit. 
And this is to make sure that we know what object we hit and from that we can calculate what the point is we uh, are hitting the object itself. So here we're going to put an if statement if physics.raycast and from that the transformed position because we are going to put the script on the camera itself so we can just start at the transform itself we can just go forward because we want to look forward and not to the left or the right then we have the other variables so first out hit so this is the output then we want the max distance and then the ray mask this is just the order in which you need to do this and we just assigned everything then now we're going to calculate the position of the depth of field object this depth of field object dot position is going to be the same as the hit dot point because this is the variable which you can just see the position of an uh, of the object it's, uh, of the object you hit so we can just see that in a minute in action when i will show it to you in the in the scene view but if you don't hit something you don't want it to be left behind by that object you last uh, looked at because that will look weird because in the end your whole screen will be blurred and you don't see anything so if you don't hit anything we just want it to be somewhere in front in the space or in the sky or whatever you want to call it so now we're going to have a depth of field object.position we're going to make the same as transform.position so the camera position plus the transform of forward multiplied by the max distance so now we cut it uh, 50 units in front for example if we put this max system max distance to 50 but it's probably a little bit too far so multiply it again by dot five because most times half of, half of it is the best but it's again something that is different in every game so just play around with this setting and also with this variable of the max distance because that's also a variable that in some games where you've got a very small game it the max distance needs to be for example five or so well if you create a big open world game like skyrim it needs to be very very high so now we can go towards the scene we're going towards the first person character going to add the depth of field manager and we don't need to get to save it but after we saved it we'll see here some variables which we are going to fill in so the transform itself is going to be this one we're going to put this on 50 uh, it really doesn't matter what you are going to do um, just play around with this setting again but Put this on the ray mask on everything except for the player and any other layer you don't want to hit so for example um, a mirror um, or class or whatever just again this is something that is different in every game so now we are going to put this scene towards another screen so we can see the uh, scene and the game at the same time and you can see that the object is moving around towards the place we're looking at and if we are going uh, if you don't see anything if you don't hit anything it will just be within the scene itself in, within the sky so as you can see right here and it was it for the depth of field but as i promised you can also do it a little bit cheaper if you don't have the resources to do it like this but it will look a lot uglier so if you don't have to do this well don't do it so i can go to image effects to camera and to vignette and chromatic aberration so this is especially made for if you want to do the same kind of effect within a mobile and what we're going to do is just have blurred corners so you will just set this to around one and this to 1.5 as you can see you got here the blur around the screen but now you already can see that we are focusing actually on this object but those two objects aren't blurred out what if it was will look a lot nicer and also if you're really close by an object 
um, you will expect that the whole screen is just sharp, but again, this will just keep uh, being blurred at the corners. So this is a little bit more ugly version of it, but also this is a lot better for the performance. So if you don't have the performance to do those two scripts, you can always do this script. Also, this is still an image effect, so it is still better if you don't use image effects at all for the performance of the game itself. But I really hope you guys liked it. If you did, please leave a like or subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another tutorial. Bye!